Hi, I'm Mark from Optitune, and I'd like to present you focused tunable liquid lenses and how to apply them in machine vision systems. In this presentation, we talk about uh, working principle, how to integrate lenses optically, mechanically, also talk about drivers and software, how you can find your ideal solution, and we add uh, several application examples in the end. Now, if you would like to have just a brief introduction, I can maybe recommend one or two other videos you'll find on our website or YouTube channel. But if you're really up for the deep dive and want to know a lot about liquid lenses in machine vision, I'll be very happy now to take you through the next few minutes. Now, apart from tunable lenses, I'd like to introduce three other optomechanical components that Optitune provides. Laser speckle reducers are essentially oscillating diffusers, which can be used to reduce laser speckle. Now, that's what you get on a wide screen. If you have a coherent laser, you'll get a black uh, interferences. This can be uh, an annoyance to the eye or be bad for resolution if you're using lasers and imaging. So by moving a diffuser quickly, you can average out those speckles over time. Then extended pixel resolution actuators are essentially a glass plate which we slightly tip tilt in two directions and that offsets the light. So we can take a complete image and move it sideways up, left and down, you know, by half a pixel, essentially quadrupling the resolution and that works in motion but also in imaging. Then 2D mirrors are a beam steering solution. Uh, you see a very large mirror that tips, large, tips and tilts in two directions in large angles and that can be used to scan a laser, for example, in LiDAR, where you need a big field of view. Uh, but also in imaging systems, you can bounce a camera image off of the mirror and uh, you know, address different uh, areas in your field of view uh, to get a higher resolution there or to stitch the image together. Now, today we talk about the liquid lenses. And we start off with the working principle. So our lens essentially is a copy of the human eye. So when you focus up close, uh, your lens will uh, curve and uh, increase its optical power to focus the divergent light of a close-up image onto your retina. So similarly now, the Optitune lens uh, changes shape. Um, it consists of a membrane which conceals a liquid and a lens shaping ring is pushed onto that membrane. The more you push, the more a positive lens will uh, occur. And if you pull on it, you can create a negative, a concave lens and uh, thus you can have positive or negative optical power. And uh, the lens shaper is actuated usually by a voice coil, which is very fast, uh, very robust, and uh, provides uh, uh, high reliability, so there's no friction in the system. And you can actually consider a liquid lens like an optical loudspeaker. So even on normal loudspeakers, you would be okay to listen to music for a decade. So similarly, uh, liquid lenses with voice coil actuators can be used uh, for many years in high uh, duty cycles, providing a very reliable and fast focusing solution. Now, why is this important for machine vision? Uh, on the right side, you see uh, the limitation that we have with fixed focus optics. So given your F number and your pixel size, you will have a certain depth of field in which your image is in focus. And that depth of field might not be big enough to cover your object, maybe because it has multiple layers or levels or because the positioning uh, accuracy is not that good. So to increase your depth of field, um, you might say, well, I'll just increase the F number. Um, sure, you can do that to a certain degree, uh, but that will require a lot more light and at some point you run into resolution limitations. And uh, what we can now do with liquid lenses uh, is to add them to the system. And with that, we can create a very large working distance range, uh, which can be accessible at low F numbers. And that really gives you a tremendous flexibility. Um, let's go through the key specifications and why those are important for machine vision. So the aperture sizes we can provide on our liquid lenses are 3 to 30 millimeters. Typically, we can address sensor sizes of a third inch to about 40 millimeters of image diameter. Uh, I mentioned we can cover very large working distance ranges, so typically from infinity to you know, up close, maybe 10 centimeters. Um, essentially, if, or if you're in a high max situation, it can be something like 100 times the depth of field you would have otherwise. So this gives you really a maximum flexibility with low F numbers. 
Very interesting about our lens are the liquids. Um, it's a low dispersion liquid, which means uh, that we do not introduce any color aberrations. So you can actually add the liquid lens to optics off the shelf without uh, worrying about color breakup or doing any optimization. We talked about the high uh, reliability. So with a billion cycles, we can propose running the lenses in oscillation over long periods of time uh, to reach a really long lifetime. For the repeatability, a typical specification is 0.1 diopters. This is typically within the depth of field. So uh, we do employ temperature compensation schemes on our lenses to make sure that they have this good repeatability. And the benefit there is that you can do a one-time calibration and keep running a system over long periods of time and having a good uh, repeatability of the focus. Now, the exciting part, if you ask me, um, is the response time, uh, which is typically in a several millisecond range. On the bottom here, we see a chart of our smaller lens, the uh, EL310, which reacts within, about a within a millisecond and settles uh, after four milliseconds. So you can technically uh, focus 250 times per second and um, yeah, at billions of cycles. So this is really a high-speed focusing tool you've get, you get there. Now, when we go through the optical configurations, I'll be speaking of uh, off-the-shelf configurations and optimized designs. Off-the-shelf is meaning that we can take typically a... Um, Something off the shelf, like a C-mount lens and a lens of Optitune, and put them together and just have a solution with uh, standard parts. Uh, we can cover probably about 70-80% of applications like that, uh, works quite well. But of course there are some limitations and um, some, some aspects that can be improved if you optimize a design. And that's done by typically integrating the liquid lens close to the aperture stop to maybe get uh, a bigger field of view or less vignetting or some other performance gain. Now, let's go through the um, optical solutions for the three typical uh, fields um, that are fixed focal length lenses, telecentric lenses, and microscope type systems. Now, for fixed focal length lenses, also called entocentric lenses, uh, we usually talk about a front lens or a back lens configuration, referring to where the liquid lens is placed. So by placing the liquid lens in the front, we can achieve fairly large working distance ranges, whereas by placing it at the back, we'll have typically short uh, distances. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then with telecentric lenses, the key thing is to integrate the liquid lens close to the aperture stop, and there we can address then magnifications from uh, 0.1 to 4x, for example. And in microscopy, um, it's, the lens is usually placed uh, somewhere in the center at a infinity path, uh, where, the, where the lights focus at infinity, and there we can address magnifications up to 100x. Now, these different configurations address different applications. As mentioned, front lens configuration is usually for uh, larger working distances, for example, packages on a conveyor belt um, or robot vision, if you would inspect an object at you know, different distances, maybe from far away, from closer up. Um, then the back lens configuration would be for smaller objects, such as maybe contact lenses or electronics components. Then telecentric lenses are also smaller objects, um, but where specifically the uh, magnification is quite important. So maybe uh, doing alignment or measuring on camera phone lenses, an example, or inspection of ICs. Uh, then in microscopy, uh, obviously life science is a big topic, but also counting particles or elements in a liquid uh, volume, for example, where you can scan through multiple layers of liquid to find out how much concentration of a certain particle in the liquid. And um, now let's go look into detail uh, how these systems are put together. Now front lens configuration we show here first with C-mount lenses. This is probably the easiest you can do and uh, there's many off-the-shelf lenses available. You just need to make sure that your um, C-mount lens has a front filter thread which is either M25.5, M27, or M30.5. 
then we will have a matching OptiTune lens with a thread that can be mounted on the filter thread. So that's quite simple. And um, as mentioned, this will typically mean we can then focus from infinity up to about 100 millimeters of working distance. The limitation there is uh, that we have a limitation on the aperture size uh, of 16 millimeters, and this will re, um, limit the field of view of such systems to roughly 30 degrees horizontal. We'll have another look at that in more detail in a minute. Then front lens configuration can also work very nicely on S-mount lenses, um, and that uh, enables very compact solutions and actually quite a large field of view because with S-mount lenses, we can approach the clear aperture of a liquid lens uh, more closely and generate up to 56 degrees horizontal field of view. Um, this is also very cost effective and it doesn't mean though that the performance wouldn't be good because you can actually get S-mount lenses with high resolution um, and really get uh, very nice, uh, even diffraction limited systems. Uh, limitations, though, are that these lenses are typically for half inch, maybe one over 1.8 inch sensors. And um, if you want to use the standard OptiTune lenses with C-mount threads, then uh, you do require a C-mount camera and also a C to S-mount adapter to, to mount the S-mount lens. And um, the other thing there is that uh, C-mount um, cameras will usually have a filter glass or a cover glass. And if the back focus distance of the S-mount lens is short, you might actually collide with that cover glass. So uh, be careful to select an S-mount lens with uh, at least four to five millimeter of clearance at the back to uh, not run into mechanical issues there. Then back lens configuration is a really nice thing with C-mount cameras and C-mount lenses where the EL1640 or also the smaller EL1030 can be fit in between C-mount on either side. So that's a very, very simple uh, way to mount. Uh, this can address large sensors up to 1.1 inch without any vignetting. And um, really good results are achieved from an optical perspective also with the smaller and cheaper EL1030 uh, EL lens. The limitation there comes from the fact that you are introducing space behind the objective. So uh, I have here a, a normal 50 millimeter lens, for example. And now if we mount the EL16 at the back, this is a 17 millimeter uh, height increase. And this would be as if you were mounting a spacer at the back. So this configuration cannot focus to infinity anymore. So the typical working distance there is maybe 160 millimeters um, and the Z range you can achieve is in the order of 40 millimeters, um, which is still quite a lot if something is up close. So, you know, as I mentioned, contact lenses or electronics components, uh, you can still cover a lot of, um, uh, a lot of working distance ranges uh, in these 40 millimeters. Then the back lens configuration becomes very interesting for M42 mount cameras and lenses because M42 mount lenses, they will have a larger flange to sensor distance, typically about 45 millimeters. And that means there's actually enough space to insert the EL at the back. Um, so on the left, we're showing an example with a 60 millimeter lens, uh, Apocomponon from Schneider. Um, this also works with Zeiss lenses like the Interlock 35. Um, you need to fit the M42 mount version of the EL16 at the back and then calculate how many spacers you need to get the right flange to sensor distance. This might also depend on your camera. Um, and the benefit of this configuration is that we can actually achieve again uh, infinity working distance. So typically infinity to maybe um, 250 millimeters could be a working distance range. And uh, we can actually cover image circles up to 30, actually even up to 40 millimeters in diameter. And um, you get this at uh, high resolution. So there's like 25, 30 megapixel cameras out there which can do that. Uh, this also works for line sensors. And we can achieve also uh, high uh, light throughput because you can use fairly low F numbers. Our lens is at the back, so we're not losing any light uh, as we would do in the front of the um, lens. So um, I think there's a lot of opportunities there. 
The limitation, I guess, is that M42 mount cameras and optics can be a bit pricey. Now, let's talk about the optimized designs. Uh, we call them ELMs, Electrical Lens Modules. And uh, the thing is that those are designs where the EL was integrated during the optical design phase and thus is really um, optimized already from a design perspective optically but also mechanically. They're inserted in the middle and you might have either a flex connector or a high rose connector um, attached to it. And this offers in the end the most compact solution because you really don't have anything like an add-on. It's really all, everything integrated. We can cover sensors um, up to 1.1 inch very well with, without vignetting, with a large field of view. Um, you can get low F numbers too. Um, we are providing at the moment, or we have seen designs from 5 to 300 millimeters of focal length. So there's a quite a nice spectrum of um, uh, modules um, popping up. And uh, another benefit is that the whole module is then fully tested. So you get something which is, you know, been integrated by an optics company, tested, and um, you can get it from, you know, one vendor. Uh, limitations there is, well, not all the focal lengths are available yet. So we're still populating the space of different focal lengths and sensor sizes, and uh, more is to come. What I'd like to highlight here on the bottom of the slide is an example an ELM25, which is a 25 millimeter focal length for 1.1 inch sensors, uh, offers a working distance range from 250 millimeters to infinity. And um, as you can see in this uh, excerpt here, we really get uh, pixel limited resolution. So we're talking here about 150 to 180 millimeter uh, line pairs per millimeter, which is a really good resolution and that's across the field. So um, very excited about this development. Uh, here's a list of the uh, of 10 uh, ELMs which are currently available. So I mentioned they go from 5 to 300 millimeters focal length. Um, they include two S-mount modules and the other, the other ones are all C-mount. Um, so 12, 25, 35, 50 and we also have some longer focal lengths like 150 and 300. Um, talk about that in a minute. Here we now see an example of such an ELM with a 12 millimeter focal length designed by VST. What we've achieved here is to provide a really large field of view, but at the same time, the high resolution of a 12 megapixel 1.1 inch sensor. And this design has really been optimized for logistics, where the typical application is, you know, you have a conveyor belt with boxes passing by at different heights, and your field of view is usually given by the largest box, which has a certain height and size. That will drive your angular field of view, but your resolution limit is given by the small package or even an envelope on the conveyor belt itself, which then has to have still a good enough resolution to read the same type of barcodes or, or features. So uh, here's really some uh, design which has managed to achieve this large field of view and um, a good resolution, a really good resolution, uh, suitable for 2.4 micron pixel size um, at a 1.1 inch sensor size. F number is 2.8 uh, without vignetting. And um, this module, yeah, there's a, a bit of barrel distortion though, uh, which has been uh, the price to pay for the good resolution, but that can be corrected digitally. Then on the other spectrum, very narrow field of view, I'd like to show one more example of a lens with um, 150, or in this case, we tested 300 millimeter focal length, where the EL1640 is also integrated. And uh, this is from SIL Optics, and it's meant or designed to uh, do inline inspection in laser processing systems, uh, where you would be viewing the object via small galvometers, uh, oftentimes also through an F-theta lens. So uh, this system focuses at infinity and the F-theta lens will bring it then to its close working distance. And uh, what you can cover here is typically a Z range of about 26 millimeters is what we tested. And um, yeah, you get a uh, really nice performance uh, considering that you have actually such a high F number and you know narrow field of view. So this is quite a nice uh, setup for laser processing. Now let's talk about telecentric lenses. Again, we show front and back lens configuration. 
and this is not ideal, okay? So we will look at the integrated ones in a minute, but let's go and see what can be done off the shelf. Now, if you place the um, EL in front, uh, what you can get is a large working distance range, fair enough. Um, your limitations, though, are that you are not any more object side telecentric. Because of the largest clear aperture of 16 millimeters, uh, you will also limit your largest object size that you can inspect to, well, below 16 millimeters in any case. And uh, you might have some difficulties to find a good mount because um, not all telecentric lenses have a filter thread or it might be then the, the wrong uh, threading. Now, back lens configuration seems quite uh, simple because you again have C-mount on either side. You can just screw our lens in between. Now, this does work with some uh, cases, especially in the magnification range of like 0.3 to maybe 0.8. Uh, this can work reasonably well. Now, um, so you do maintain object side telecentricity. That's good. But because you're so far away from the aperture stop, actually your working distance range or the Z range you get to focus over is rather small compared to what's achievable otherwise. Actually, the optical leverage is a formula here. Um, relating to uh, the magnification, which you can use. Uh, this you can use to estimate what kind of uh, working distance range you would get. And also, at the back there, right before the camera, you do have a pretty strong effect on the chief rays when you focus, which means that you get a significant magnification change, uh, which can be corrected digitally, but it's not really desirable. So now let's move into the um, optimized space. Um, for example, here we see a lens from Sil Optics was the first company to introduce telecentric lenses with a integrated liquid lens. And the key thing is that our liquid lens here is right behind the aperture stop. And uh, that results in actually the largest possible Z range, which then is typically about 100 times the usual depth of field of such a telecentric lens. Um, a very nice feature is that the working distance changes very linearly with optical power. That makes your calibration very easy. You basically just need two points. Also, the magnification change is linear, and it's quite low. So in the range of 0.1 to 0.8% per millimeter of Z range that you change. Um, all these uh, telecentric lenses show no vignetting. Our aperture size is way big enough for telecentric lenses, so that's not to worry about. They do not show any additional distortion or resolution loss because of the liquid lens. And uh, today there's about 33 models available off the shelf with magnifications from 0.13 to 4x. Um, limitations, um, some magnifications in between might not be available, but they can be custom designed. Here's now a list of the uh, lenses available from Still Optics. Um, about 16 models, five of them include uh, coaxial lighting, sensor sizes that are covered are from half inch, mostly one inch though, and some of the higher mag ones, they go even up to 35 millimeters of image circle. In this table, we show another 12 telecentric lenses from three additional vendors, VST, Edmund Optics, and Linku in China. And uh, yeah, magnifications are you know, from 0.15 to 4x. Again, different sensor sizes, typically two-third inch. Some of them cover one-third in, uh, cover one-inch sensors. And it'll show on the right also your working distance range which is usually in the you know, order of like 10, 10 millimeters, but this will again depend on your uh, magnification. You can see a lot of fine print in this slide. Um, these are links to our partners and also test reports. Um, so anytime you actually see uh, fine print on one of our slides here, it's probably because we have a test report which you can find on our website. So now microscopy. Here we have two main situations. On the left, we show non-telecentric and on the right, the telecentric approach. In a non-telecentric approach, you place the liquid lens right above the objective in its infinity space. This is pretty straightforward. Sometimes you can even have the right threading. Um, for example, we provide M26 for me to Toyo lenses, and you will get rather large Z ranges. Um, for example, 160 micron Z range for a 40X magnification. 
However, because you are at that point also bending the G-phrase, you do get some magnification change, which can be significant, for example, about 23-24% over the whole 160 micrometer range of a 40x lens. Now, to avoid the magnification change, what you can do is place the liquid lens into an intermediary pupil position, which can be formed by adding relay lenses behind the image plane. So, um, in that 4F system, uh, you can uh, basically add the relay on top of an existing um, camera port, for example, and there you will get no mag change. Uh, however, the Z range is typically uh, a bit lower, for example, than 60 micrometers on a 40x magnification. There is the option also to use more than a 5 diopter lens. We provide lenses up to 20 diopters where the Z range could be extended again. Um, here's an example of the shelf system where uh, several you know, field lenses or um, objectives can be used. Uh, you see some numerical examples here again uh, up to 100x and here we can fit our C-mount uh, version EL1640 lens and have a fairly flexible design. Then Navitar has introduced as well um, the EL1640 as an autofocus module, can be paired with the, um, several field lenses or objectives, and of course they uh, also fit with the zoom. So the zoom 6000 is uh, the system, and typically the, um, the liquid lens will be placed below the zoom, which means that uh, the system is parfocal. Uh, that means you do not change the focus while you zoom, because the zooming is then above the liquid lens. A similar system from Keoptic, uh, the Optem Fusion, also has an autofocus module with the EL16 designed in. And here is a variable um, variable zoom lens from Edmund Optics where an EL1030 is integrated, although here now above the zoom, which means this system is not parfocal, so after zooming you will usually have to refocus the image. Um, providing here magnifications uh, in, the mid, in the medium range of 0.75 to 4.5x. Then we also have some compact solutions, uh, like a 2 and a 5x lens from Edmund Optics. Here the EL1030 is integrated uh, in the middle. A very useful configuration for yeah, a compact uh, portable system maybe, which doesn't need any zoom. Um, also fairly well priced, so this can be a good solution for OEMs. A um, bit less versatile than the other um, modular solutions that I've showed you before. And here's another very interesting uh, versatile solution actually. Um, so Edmund Optics has these ultra compact objective lenses and uh, you can then choose tubes of different lengths behind that to achieve different magnifications. So the example we show here uh, is a 5x magnification, that means that after the objective lens you have an EL1640, in this case we choose the 20 diopter version, then we add 15 millimeters of spacers, and that results in a 5x magnification, and at that point we then have a um, Z range of 1.3 millimeters roughly, um, very low magnification change, and uh, yeah, as you can choose the tube length, this can be a quite a nice, um, simple to configure system to achieve exactly what you need in terms of magnification. Uh, image circle is quite big, so sensor format is easily a 1.1 inch sensor. So now that you've seen all these possibilities, I'd like to show you a few tools uh, that make it easier for you to select the right one. Um, first, a little excursion in um, what optical power actually means. You might have heard me say the word diopter uh, in this presentation. So, one diopter is one over the focal length of a single lens. This is something which you might also know from the eye doctors. If you have glasses, your prescription is in diopters, and zero diopters is a flat piece of glass. One diopter lens has its focus at one meter distance, two diopters at half a meter distance, etc. So the nice thing is that in our world, um, optical power is very nice to calculate with. First of all, it's linear with current with our lenses. And um, the inclination of the uh, optical power versus current depends on the refractive index of the liquid. 
and on um, the membrane thickness or stiffness. So, for example, if we would like to get more tuning range, we can propose developing a lens with a thinner membrane to, to get more Z range. Um, then, as I mentioned, optical power can be added up arithmetically. So you can count one uh, diopter value plus another diopter value, as long as these lenses are all fairly close together. And uh, this gives a simple math uh, for calculating the working distance for the front lens configuration, for example. So the, the typical thing you would do is you would set your standard opt, uh, working distance to half a meter before adding a liquid lens. Then by going to minus two diopters, you can get back to infinite working distance. And by adding plus three diopters, you then get to a fifth of a meter uh, working distance. So that's how your typical five diopter range will give you a, a working distance range from infinity to a fifth of a meter. Um, we also talked about vignetting. If uh, you put an EL16, for example, on the filter thread of a C-mount lens, I'd like to show here another rule of thumb. On a 12-inch, uh, on a 12-millimeter focal length, uh, you'd get a horizontal field of view of 28 degrees for a half-inch sensor. That's all good. Now, if you want to go to larger sensors, you would start to crop some light on the edges, and then you um, get vignetting. So the rule of thumb here is that a 12 millimeter lens works for a half inch sensor and thus a 25 millimeter lens can have a front lens configuration for a one inch sensor. And this um, 30 degree kind of line you will find also here in this chart. Let me explain this important chart to you briefly. On the left you see um, camera sensor size from quarter inch to up to 30 millimeters in diagonal. And then on the um, horizontal axis, you'll see uh, different focal lengths. And the number in the matrix is the angular horizontal field of view. So you can see again your uh, 12 and a half inch is your 30 degree field of view that we said, or a tw same, uh, similar at 25 millimeters, one inch. That uh, diagonal line is your, your limit essentially for a standard off the shelf front lens configuration. But what we can also see is that there's a few green fields uh, in this chart. For example, the 12 millimeter focal length for the one inch sensor, which is essentially this uh, ELM12 that I presented you from VST, which has been specifically designed to have this large field of view and large sensor size. So everywhere where there's a little star, um, there is a custom design or an optimized design um, that has been done. And uh, yes, we're working hard with our partners around the world to provide optimized designs in, um, in all these places where there's no off-the-shelf solution yet. You can also see on the right side, back lens configuration is mentioned for all the lenses which are 35 millimeters or longer. As you remember, you need to have a long focal length because when you introduce an EL at the back, it's as if you introduce a spacer. So this only works with large focal lengths. Um, there is an online configurator which you can use. Um, it's actually quite nice to play around with. First, you enter your object size and your working distance range that you would like. Then you can choose a sensor size, a, um, a focal length lens of a lens, front and back lens configuration is supported. And then you can see that the blue line goes through the green box uh, on the right side. So this is actually quite a nice tool to uh, configure uh, entocentric systems. There's also an offline tool, which I can heavily recommend, um, especially what's nice here, it, in, it includes specific part numbers. So it starts off with the matrix you've seen before. Um, you enter your field of view that you need and your object and your working distance. You calculate the angular field of view, and then you can click somewhere in that matrix and it'll show you a list of lenses that we can recommend for that specific configuration. Some of those might be off-the-shelf combinations, as we talked about, but some might also include these uh, ELM modules which have been optimized. A similar matrix also uh, exists for telecentric lenses. Um, here uh, on the x-axis, you now see different magnifications, um, going from 0.15 to 4x. 
And again here, uh, everything that's green has a solution to it. The ones with a star are optimized. And we really here talk about mainly the optimized solutions because that's where we see really the biggest benefit of using the liquid lens. <clears throat> and um, also here, we'd be happy to find uh, designs with our optics partners to cover the re remainder of this uh, matrix. Also here, there's an, off -lens, uh, an offline calculator available. Uh, for you to click through, it includes a database of all the lenses which have been designed so far. Now, if you have a uh, problem to solve, uh, some products to inspect, and you'd like to ask us for advice, then please provide us these five key pieces of information. First of all, the field of view of your object. This might really be your object size, or if your object is much bigger than the field of view you'd like to see within one picture. Uh, then we need to know the Z range to focus over. So this might be your object height or this might be the placement inaccuracy. Then tell us if you have a constraint in minimum object distance, for example, because of some lighting or also maximum object distance because of the size of the machine that you're constructing. Uh, we'd like to know your desired sensor size and resolution to be able to match the right optics. And if relevant, mention please the F number um, this can be a consideration for low light uh, conditions, for example, iris recognition, you might want to go for a low F number. So in the next chapter, we'll look at standard products, uh, including drivers and software. So the Optitune liquid lenses as such, uh, the single elements, um, there are three main families. It's the EL310. This is three millimeter clear aperture, 10 millimeters outer diameter. Then there's the EL1030 family with a 10 millimeter clear aperture. There we have a compact version and a C-mount threaded option. And then there's the EL1640 family with uh, the largest clear aperture of 16 millimeters. And there we provide again uh, flex cable solutions for OEMs and an industrial version with Hyrosi connector for uh, industrial environments. There's data sheets with a lot more information on all these lenses on our website, so I'll skip the details here. Please refer to the data sheets. In terms of controllers, there's three uh, we can recommend off the shelf. Uh, the first is from Optitune, a USB-based controller. Um, it uh, typically run from a Windows computer or a Linux computer, actually, uh, over a serial COM port. Then there is an industrial controller from Gardasoft, which has Ethernet interface, RS-232, and a nice analog 0 to 10 volt interface. And then there's an embedded controller as well, the CL191, which is, uh, offers I2C, UART as an interface, and again, the analog, and that's really for, uh, to be designed into uh, compact systems uh, by OEMs. Another important feature I'd like to highlight is our temperature compensation. So liquid lenses, they do have a temperature effect in the sense that when temperature increases, liquid expands, and thus the lens becomes more positive. Um, these, this is based on uh, temperature coefficients, however, which are well known and they're linear and actually can be very nicely compensated. So what we do in OQC is we measure optical power versus current for all the lenses at two different temperatures. We save all that data on the EEPROM, which is in the lens, and then the driver in runtime will read out all that data, will read out the temperature in the lens and calculate what is the correct or the best current to apply to the lens to hit a specific diopter value. So for example, if I want to go to one diopter, it might be a little bit different current depending on the temperature, and the repeatability which we get, uh, which achieving this one diopter would be um, in the 0.1 diopter range, which is usually within the depth of field of the optics. So the drivers I showed you beforehand are um, external components, which are usually connected to a host system like a PC or an SPS. And um, what we're working on uh, very intensely is to provide an integrated driver, which is inside the liquid lens, and through the serial interface provided, I2C or UART can be connected directly to the camera. If this is well implemented, and uh, we're working on the GenyCam standards to do that, then um, a host system can control the liquid lens via the camera using the camera's SDK. So this can typically be then also in GenyCam. So there's a set focus command, and the camera will then take care of um, controlling 
the driver and the focus. And this is really an effort to make things as easy to use as possible. Uh, here you see the integrated driver, which is already um, close to being launched. And um, yeah, the interface I mentioned, I squared C or UART, this can, by the way, also be connected to an FPGA or some other embedded system. And um, the protocol in the end, uh, if it's integrated with a camera, will be hidden to the end user. So in the end, it'll be a Genicam type communication that you have between the system and the camera. Then how to find the right focus uh, is an important consideration. There's typically three approaches. So you might want to use the image itself and do an autofocus routine. So typically acquire maybe 10, 15 frames, find the best focus. Uh, that's quite simple, um, but it's not 100% reliable because your algorithm might actually miss the best focus and you might miss uh, detecting a defect, which is actually there, but you just didn't see it. Um, then there's preset lookup tables, which is probably the most common. So if you know that product A requires this focus setting, product B requires this other one, you can save this information in your host system. And as the different products come along, you just trigger the right uh, focus commands. And within one step, you'd be focused. So typically in 10, 20 milliseconds, you'd be uh, focused. And there the repeatability obviously is important. But with this uh, thermal compensation, this does work very well. And the third version is if you do not know uh, the distance to your objects, you can use a distance sensor to measure it. <clears throat> and um, a very nice system is to have a calibration between certain distance values and diopter values. This lookup table can be actually stored on the driver. And the distance sensor can feed into the analog input and automatically then uh, select the right diopter setting for the lens. Uh, this is a system which we've shown multiple times at trade shows uh, on our rotating table here. You have objects of different height. The distance sensor is picking up uh, that distance. A 0 to 10 volt uh, analog signal is fed into the controller, in this case the CL180 by Gardasoft. And uh, basically within 20 milliseconds, uh, the new position is focused. Uh, we also partner with several software vendors who include um, interfaces for these drivers. Uh, without going into details here, if you see your favorite software vendor on this list, um, talk to us. We might already have some source code available and uh, can help your integration. A very nice feature I'd like to highlight is uh, so-called image stacking to achieve a hyper-focus image or to actually get depth information, uh, depth from focus. So what you see on the left is um, uh, examples of uh, maybe 10 to 30 images which you might take of a certain object at different distances. And then all these images can be merged together by software. <clears throat> In this case, we use um, Helicon Focus, uh, free off-the-shelf software. Um, so you see on the right an extended depth picture. And you can also see that there's uh, depth information uh, encoded in that picture, which you can use. Um, this can also be done at uh, fast frame rates on the fly, does however require some processing power. So we've shown this uh, running on an FPGA by Silicon Software with visual applets. Um, the system was taking 20 images per stack at the 20 hertz frame rate and was able to output a, a real-time extended depth picture and also a depth map at 20 frames per second. What you can also do is uh, use a liquid lens to uh, not only just focus, but even find uh, the distance. So let's say you have an object, you want to know where it is or at what the distance is at certain areas in the field. You can use the liquid lens in oscillation. You keep uh, recording images and you calculate then your best focus position versus the optical power. And there where you have a maximum, because this, this distribution will typically be on a parabolic kind of curve at, at the, the focus point. And then you can fit uh, a curve in there and find the best focus position, and that's where your image is in focus. So this is also an algorithm you can use for autofocus, uh, but the output can be also a distance. So you might want to consider using liquid lenses as a low-cost way of sensing distance. So... 
I'm happy you're still with me here. We've talked about a lot of configurations, a lot of technical details. Now I'd like to show you a few application examples so you can imagine what can be done uh, with your products and um, systems in the field. So a very, very um, obvious application is package sorting. So you have boxes of different size and you need to read barcodes or do OCR on those boxes. And uh, you need to focus across a fairly large working distance range and have a pretty decent field of view. So uh, one configuration we can recommend here is this back lens configuration using a 60 millimeter M42 mount lens. In this example, we achieved a working distance range of 800 to 1,500 millimeters um, at a 30 megapixel camera, I think. And um, yeah, that's a really high-end solution to this problem. Similar solution would be maybe now using this ELM12, uh, which is for the 1.1 inch sensor, which has 12 megapixels. So um, that's a more compact and maybe also more affordable solution for the same problem here. Then bottle inspection. So looking through the throat of a bottle at the floor, uh, you can inspect bottles of different size by changing the focus. Um, angular field of view in this case was 14 degrees. Uh, we used a 35 millimeter C-mount lens and um, an EL 1640 in front lens configuration and achieved working distance ranges of 150 to 550 millimeters, the typical size of, of bottles. Um, robot vision, I like a lot this case where um, you have an, in an inspection system mounted on a robot and it can inspect different uh, positions of an object, for example an engine. Now imagine you were a bit further away, your system can maybe take a, a whole, uh, the image of the whole system as an overview and then you can go five times closer, you refocus and then you can inspect a detail at a five times higher magnification just by refocusing the lens. Of course, you have the robot which moves your camera closer. So this is a, actually a nice way to implement zoom and thus you can really save as a uh, inspection setup, you know, different robot positions. And along with the position, you also save the optical power of the lens needed at that position to get the best image. Uh, really versatile system. Here we used uh, for compactness sake a, a um, S-mount solution with a 12 millimeter S-mount lens. EL1030 in the front, um, achieving working distance ranges of 170 to 1 meter. I talked about contact lens inspection. This is ideal for the back lens configuration. In this case, we achieve a Z range of 45 millimeters, definitely big enough for contact lenses and also their casings, which are equally not flat. Um, very nice example. Um, similar example can also be applied to electronics inspection. Uh, also again here, back lens configuration. In this case, we used a bigger sensor size as well, one inch format, which works very nicely for back lens configuration. Then to get, for example, a bit higher magnification, in this case, additional spacers were used at the back. So another 20 millimeters of spacers uh, bump up the magnification a bit. So in this case, the Z range is lower. It's only 21 millimeters, but still enough Z range to inspect uh, gems or jewels of different sizes uh, with high magnification. For telecentric lenses, I mentioned a nice application is um, co camera compact camera module inspection. So this is the uh, VST lens with a 1x magnification. The THV1 series has a very high resolution, so this worked nicely with a 12 megapixel 1.1 inch sensor, achieving um, obviously a, the same field of view, 1x, uh, so 14 by 10 millimeters field of view, and at that field of view, a Z range of 14 millimeters. Check out the test report, which you'll find out online. Now, a very nice trick using telecentric lenses is the fact that you can actually use mirrors on the side to then look at the side of an object. So here we're inspecting ICs. Um, so you can look on the top with one working distance and then by changing the working distance, you can look at the sides via the mirror. So uh, in this configuration, we use a very large field of view uh, telecentric lens, the 0.15x from Edmund Optics and uh, used a 50 millimeter Z range 
which was easily enough to uh, inspect even fairly large uh, devices from five sides, essentially the top and all four other sides, with only one camera. Then here's an example of industrial microscopy using Zoom. So Envotem, a Chinese company, has um, used the EL1640 in addition to the uh, nice Zoom uh, optics and uh, they've integrated uh, the controller in their software and they provide these nice features of extended depth, um, depth from focus, etc. Um, all in one nice package. So this is a, a really nice uh, system solution for medium to high magnifications. Last example is a portable microscope. Um, I think especially when you are in a portable microscope environment, you really don't want to have a lot of mechanics. And the liquid lens is a very nice option to do fast focusing in a compact, lightweight system. And um, especially this case here is interesting. It's um, without zoom, so you have a fixed magnification. In this case, it was a 6x mag. Uh, again, this magnification was determined by the length of the tubes that are used. So the objective lens below is actually an off-the-shelf um, lens from Edmund Optics, but it's used backwards, so you flip it around. Where the image sensor would usually be, you place the object for inspection, and then you come at the back of the C-mount lens with EL1030 and an empty tube. And um, yeah, that resulted in a 6x magnification, field of view roughly 1, 1 1.4 millimeters, and a Z-range in the order of 0 0.8 millimeters, which allows to scan through different layers of liquid and count particles or um, cells. All right, so um, I really tried to show you the main uh, configurations, the, the general configurations. If you want, have a look at this presentation online. You will find there's a lot more lenses that we have been working with, which we've portrayed, which we've tested which provides specific benefits that can be used in certain applications. Thanks a lot for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And if you have any ideas, comments, concerns, reach out to Optitune uh, or one of our sales partners. We'll be very happy to support you to find a solution that fits your requirements.